microphone check one two three cheddar cheese in the place to be silver price report coming at you bringing you the daily price of real physical silver we got to give a shout out got a few new subscribers over by the past week or two thanks for hitting that subscribe button big shout out to mr l out there for the constant support both on the silver side and on the music side speaking of that got some new rhymes out i'm gonna put that in the link for those that uh out there might enjoy a little bit of hip-hop little chicka 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 rap music <laughs> probably have the freaking weirdest combination on a youtube channel that is out here also one more announcement i might have some errands to run during the week i'm not sure how my schedule is gonna look yet so episodes might be a little bit spotty if i end up missing an episode or two just know you know ain't no technical difficulties i haven't disappeared the fed reserve hasn't assassinated me yet just got some stuff to do so let's get into the price for today this is for October 18th, 2021, priced in U.S. dollars. Actually, let me use this arrow thing here going back and forth. So, this is American Silver Eagle, $33.48. Canadian Maple Leaf, $29.36. Austrian Philharmonic, $28.00. Two cents. All this is priced in U.S. dollars. I don't know if I said that. Private Mint, $27.34. Average price, $29.74. Premium, $6.39 over spot. That average price down about four cents for today. Spot price up about six cents. Let us get into some news now this is a little bit old news it's from last week I forgot to talk about it now i'm not too too hip on the what the implications of this would be so i'm just going to read the article for you guys uh, if you haven't heard this news and then let you draw your own conclusions this is from reuters exclusive banks prepare to scrap lme that's a uh, london metals exchange gold and silver contracts sources say a group of banks that partnered with the london metal exchange to launch gold and silver futures in 2017 is preparing to abandon the project after hope for volumes did not materialize three sources with direct knowledge of the matter said such a move would end an attempt by the lme which dominates industrial metals trading to capture part of London's bullion market, which is the world's largest with gold worth some 17 trillion change, which is the world's largest with gold worth some 17 trillion changing hands last year. The LME launched the contracts with partners, including Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, who agreed to promote trade in them in return for 50% of revenues generated. That's a nice 50% return is nice. The project partners had hoped tightening regulation would push bullion trading in London away from the over-the-counter deals between banks and brokers to exchanges which regulators see as safer and more transparent. But the biggest dealers, which include JP Morgan and HBSC, or HSBC, shunned the contracts and after so oh, I don't know what that is, Societe Generale. One of the LME's partners closed most of its commodities business in 2019. Training dwindled to nothing. So, let me take a drink here. Normally, we don't do this on the, on the show, but I get thirsty. So, I thought it was interesting that JP Morgan wasn't down with moving from the Away from the stuff that's a little bit more opaque, the over-the-counter market, and a different exchange. 
just because JP Morgan, we all know, is heavy in the silver business, got busted spoofing the silver market. But again, I don't I don't really know. I don't I don't I don't understand the implications of this deal enough to really to really really comment. I just the name JP Morgan jumped out at me. Three sources at banks partnered with the LME said they would meet in coming months. Two said if nothing had changed, they would pull out. The third said it was clear the contracts had not been successful and the LME deal was up in the air. There's not been anyone who was keen on keeping it, one of the sources said, adding that his bank was paying a couple hundred grand a year to maintain the contracts and had millions of dollars locked up in a default fund for them. The deal with its partners had an initial term of five years. LME Chief Executive Matt Chamberlain toward Reuters. It's very possible they choose not to continue after 2022, he said. Others that partnered the L... Nah, they they messed up. Others that partnered with the LME are ICBC Standard, Natasix, Propriety Trader, OSTC, and the World Gold Council, an industry body. This is a quote here. The World Gold Council strongly believes in increasing transparency and investor accessibility to gold. This is why we support LME Precious and will continue to collaborate across the industry on similar initiatives. Mike Oswin, WGC's global head of market structure and innovation, said in a statement. All of the banks involved declined to comment. OSTC did not respond to a request, request for comment. Hmm. You know, again, my my knee jerk, my uninformed, ignorant opinion is J.P. Morgan, or wh- whoever whoever's moving the metal, you know, the precious metals side wants to stay opaque. They don't want it to be open on a on a on a more transparent um, exchange. But again, I'm not I'm not too hip with with what this exchange would be doing. This is called critical mass. Although the contracts had a positive start with 14.3 million ounces of gold worth around 20 billion and 121 million ounces of silver worth about 2 billion trading on the LME in September 2017, activity then began to fall. In 2019 and 2020, a bullion price rally pushed trading in London and on New York's COMEX exchange to record levels with about a billion ounces of gold changing hands in each venue in March 2020. The LME's contracts have not traded since mid-2020. So again, that's again interesting there. So London, I wonder if they mean the LBMA, London Bullion Market Association. And then just what's interesting to me is that, you know, the activity is remaining on the COMEX. You know, COMEX is center to a lot of the shenanigans. COMEX futures centered to a lot of the shenanigans we know about in precious metals. Last year, the LME's partners wrote the value of the project down from $2.5 million to zero. The accounts of a company set up by the partners show. A quote, there wasn't enough critical mass from the banks who wanted the market to go on exchange and go clear to compared to perhaps some of the other banks who wanted it to stay OTC, said Chamberlain. So yeah, banks still want it on the over the counter, probably because it's a little bit more opaque. Despite the failure of the contracts, sources involved in them and at banks that did not use them said trading in London was likely to eventually go on exchange because that is what regulators want. So I wonder if any of this is tied in with Basel Three that we talked about with this. Because um, remember there was stuff with the LBMA uh, being exempted from Basel Three, perhaps and. You know, this re- reassigning of gold to a tier one asset. So I wonder if this has anything to do with, with that. In a few years, someone will try this again, one said. That's it. So take it for what you will. You know, anonymous sources, especially in today's media environment. Just, you know, who knows? This might be FUD or something being pushed out there. So I just wanted to read that. You guys can come up with your own conclusions because I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable enough to really offer any type of uh, commentary let's move on here since we're talking about futures 
Bitcoin's first ETF hits the New York Stock Exchange on Tuesday, which is, uh, well, this recording, I'm recording this on Tuesday, so it's going to open up here in a few hours. Let me read this part. A futures ETF is notably different from a standard exchange traded fund, which Bitcoin enthusiasts have been lobbying for. A typical ETF would give investors exposure to the underlying asset, in this case, Bitcoin, whereas a futures ETF allows investors to speculate on the price of the asset. So the big concern here is uh, introduced volatility into the Bitcoin market. And uh, it, with Bitcoin ending up like um, gold and silver with the spot price or the price of the asset coming from the future. So instead of, you know, the futures price or the price of these contracts deriving value from the underlying asset, it ends up vice versa. The paper determines the price of the physical, not the physical determining the price of the paper. That is the big concern here. And though I am a no coiner, you know, I'll extend an olive branch to the crypto people, to the Bitcoin people. Uh, you know, I'd hate to, you know, we're on the same side as far as the dislike of central banks and fiat money. So, you know, to see them get smacked around by Wall Street, I know it doesn't make me too happy. Um, also, shout out to, <clears throat> excuse me, shout out to George Gammon. Because um, something that he always talked about on his channel was the fact that, uh, a Bitcoin ETF was, he thought it was essentially was inevitable. He thought just because of human nature and, uh, you know, people would be inclined to do these fintech, you know, financial technologies, these financial innovations around Bitcoin. I want to read something here. Just the, um, oh, wait, why did that do that? Just to highlight. What goes on uh, with futures and precious metals? So this is from WikiLeaks. I don't know if I've ever read this. I know I've talked about it and showed it. I don't know if I've ever read parts of it. Uh, this is a uh, telegram. London wholesale gold dealers view on U.S. gold sale and private U.S. ownership. I think it's from the, the State Department. So it's from the United Kingdom to the Department of State and the Secretary of State again back in 1974 right before futures uh, market were developed for gold I'm not sure when they when they were started for silver now they're talking now earlier on they were talking about um, how purchases from certain countries or individuals of gold would, would again shoot the price up and give the impression you know that gold was very valuable and bring more people into it let me read this part here each of the dealers expressed the belief that the futures market would be of significant proportion and physical trading would be minuscule by comparison also expressed was the expectation that large volume futures dealing would create a highly volatile market in turn the volatile price movements would diminish the initial demand for physical holding and most likely negate long-term hoarding by U.S. citizens. And so this is a, uh, a real possibility for Bitcoin with this, this futures ETF being launched, um, especially with the, let's say, tech gap that might exist with some people of... Um, having to set up a wallet and a cold storage wallet and learning about blockchain. I mean, why do all that when I can just get on my Robin hood? I mean, you can, you can buy Bitcoin, I guess, and have Robin hood store it. Um, but if you want the actual Bitcoin, you're going to have to move it to, um, cold storage. I mean, it's very similar to gold and silver and precious metals. I mean, I have to own the physical. I mean, you can, you can go online and, and, and order, um, from an online dealer come to you, but you got to worry about storage. I got to, you got to get a safe or find a hiding spot. It takes up room and though Bitcoin doesn't take up room. There's still a, there's a knowledge gap, a technological gap there that people have to learn. 
So why do all that when you can just get price exposure through a um, through an ETF and you don't even have to worry about losing your Bitcoin because uh, you won't have any. Just like when I own you own an ETF with gold or silver, I mean it's easier to store because well, you're not storing anything. You know, uh, even PSLV, the Royal Canadian Mint has your has your silver or has your gold even if you're going through um, Sprout for the gold ETF. I mean, with SLV, which is the JP Morgan fund, um, you can't turn you can't turn any of those shares in to get physical period. Um, JP Morgan holds on to it for you. So same thing with Bitcoin. I mean, why worry about getting a cold storage wallet and learning all this tech stuff when I'll just I'll just buy a future ETF and have price exposure. And so it's a very real possibility that what this Telegram is expressing about gold could happen to Bitcoin. And that is you'd have more um, futures trading than you would have physical trading. And then you end up with that, um, you know, the futures determining the spot price of Bitcoin. And then if you get these banks in JP Morgan, who uh, Wells Fargo, whoever else who are shareholders in the Federal Reserve, they are the Fed. You know, Jamie Dimon doesn't like uh, Bitcoin. I, mean, I think they offer some services, but you know, thinks it's he thinks it's worthless. I guess that puts me and him in the same uh, boat. The difference, though, is um, you know Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan would probably make moves since they have an interest in seeing paper money stay around, since they have essentially a exclusive right to print the shit. Um, so they have an interest in. Uh, manipulating that futures market to push the price lower you know i might be a no coiner but you know i don't i don't really care i own gold and silver i don't there's no incentive for me even if i had billions of dollars there's no incentive for me to go into um you know these bitcoin futures and screw around with the price I'm talking about this shady stuff man jay powell getting hit from zero hedge powell stock trades leak show multi-million sale as market tank so it's looking like powell was doing uh was a lot more than just the municipal bonds so before with the first leaks that were going on um with the federal reserve the, the governors or board members i can't remember which one or you know some governor i don't know if those governors were also on the uh, voting members of the board um but anyway with the first leaks you had some guys clearly doing insider trading. Jay Powell, he came out and said, look, I, I used to own, you know, I own municipal bonds for years. I own them with the expectation that the Fed would never buy municipal bonds. And they ended up doing it. Now, actually, I believe them or I still believe them on that. I had no reason not to. Um, you know, I, I know I probably seem like, I guess, in a. Hopefully, I don't come across as like shilling for the guys, but you know, I um, well, how do I how do I put it? I I ain't about to. I'm not gonna beat up on anybody if, if they don't really deserve it. I, I didn't see anything you know unreasonable with with what he was saying. Again, I mean, the, the Fed didn't bail out, didn't buy municipal bonds to help out Jay Powell's portfolio. They bought the freaking municipal bonds. Um, to shore up municipalities, cities, and shit so uh, the lockdowns could happen. His tax revenue fell off a cliff. I suspect that cities needed financing to keep the lights on and to keep the freaking, you know, water flowing. But it turns out that he actually even sold, um, sold some uh, um, companies, sold some shares right before or right during a market dip. So he cut his losses and got out. So he was doing a lot more than just that. You know, looking a lot more shady. Let me read this here from Zero Hedge. One final point to note. Powell, as everyone knows, is a multimillionaire with a net worth between 17 and 55 million. Having worked much of his career on Wall Street and especially at Carlisle, where he was a partner between 1997 and 2005. 
His filing confirm his wealth and nothing wrong with that. But in what may be a problem for Powell, the leaked filing reveals among other assets, substantial holdings, i.e. the 5 to 25 million in the uh, SPY ETF, an asset which clearly is moved by the Fed's announcements and decisions, and which we are confident will spark howls of fake outrage from Senate progressives who demand Powell's ouster and immediate replacement with Democrat socialist Leo Brainerd. Because this was all leaked from a, um, a magazine called American Prospect, which initially called the Liberal, the Liberal Prospect. Um, so more of a left-wing thing. And this is something we've talked about too. Um, I mean, this stuff, is these leaks, I guess, they're clearly hits coming from uh, more left-wing individuals to get Fed governors out of the way and make it so Biden can appoint his Fed governor and now a new chair because it does look like uh, Leo Brainerd is the candidate of choice to take over for Jay Powell. And Leo Brainerd, see, I'm not, I don't know if she's ever come out like, explicitly and talked about MMT, but I do know that at least the progressive side is very, 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 very much wrapped up with MMT. Matter of fact, I just had, if you follow me on Twitter, you see, I didn't had a, it was like a two or three day freaking debate with two MMT people. Um, yeah, MMT is the new, it's the new economics uh, picked up by essentially socialists and, and progressives. It's um, it's interesting that they've attached themselves to because a lot of those. It's interesting, especially if you if you follow the economic, I guess debates and things that have occurred over the last few years. I mean, um, the guys I was debating were big into Keynes, John Maynard Keynes. Um, but see. But Krugman right now is uh, Paul Krugman is kind of from uh, is, uh, has a column at the New York Times, the Nobel Nobel uh, Prize winning economist. I don't think he's down with MMT, and he's kind of the face of Keynesianism. So it's like a, a newer, younger generation that's somehow merged the ideas of Warren Mosler, who's the essentially father of MMT with Keynes. That's what it looks like to me. Um, but it is the means to their essentially socialist ends. I mean, one of the guys I was talking to, um, you know, wants like basically the uh, world currency, uh, like global capital controls. And it seems to be, cause I watch the links. I mean, pretty much the stuff that, that people, you know, they'll, they'll post up videos or something as part of their arguments. And I watched them. Um, and, and a lot of this stuff, MMT and stuff, is coming under the guise of uh, um, climate climate change, global warming, being pushed as an existential threat. So it's, I'm not gonna get too too deep into into all of that, but weird times, dude. Weird, weird times. You know, I talked about you know scientism technocracy is the new religions and all of that is wrapped up with the climate change stuff and it's hard it's hard I don't have my thoughts all the way fleshed out on it um but it's all it's all intertwined it's I mean I was just reading a, um I follow AOC on Twitter um you know and talking about you know climate change is a moral it's a moral imperative an ethical imperative so it's, it just, it just comes across as a new, new religious movement. MMT is wrapped up in it, World Economic Forum, and again, man, just we in clown world, bro, crazy, crazy times. Uh, but that's it for tonight. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you can incorporate this into your analysis. Until tomorrow, peace out.